Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Game. I saw you on Twitter, the gaming drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Tennis Ace June's Path. I believe we're still on June's Path. Yes, we're on June's Path. Anyway, y'all, don't forget to uh, uh, check out the uh, Green Man Gaming link in the description. If you go to the Green Man Gaming link, you'll uh, get awesome discounts on the latest and greatest games, and I get commission for whatever y'all buy. And my lovely girlfriend, Elle, is an artist. She's taking commissions. I've got her uh, FA and Twitter info in the link. I mean, in the, in the description, so y'all check her out if you're looking to get some art commissioned. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> well, didn't you say you were going to get me some water? I was. Then you said you were never getting up from that bench again. Now I kind of want you to get it yourself. You're awful. Sure am. See ya. See ya. She quickly walks away, leaving me alone on my bench, waterless and exhausted. Ah, uh, great. Might as well get it myself. I try standing up, but my legs immediately go nope and buckle under my weight. I immediately fall ass first on the bench again. Well, hey, hey, I know I said it was a joke, but I don't want to be stuck on this bench for the rest of my life. Who are you talking to? I look to the side and see June standing there by the entrance with Vic and next to him. Uh, oh, uh, no one. N no one at all. Did I just get caught talking to myself? Great, that doesn't make me sound crazy at all. Actually, why was I even talking to myself? What's wrong with me? Oh, no, don't go there. What's up, June? What brings you to this part of a... Ah, oh, screw it. I'm too tired to make a clever joke out of that. I get the feeling it wouldn't be a clever joke, even if you weren't. Since when did you become so sassy? Never mind that. I was showing Chef Cut around school, and I mentioned mizuguchi san and Rushi Harris. Rushi Harris had run the tennis club, so I wanted to come take a look. I hope that's okay. It is. Don't worry about it. So, Chef Cut, was it Vikan just this morning? Anyway, uh, Chef Cut, what got you interested in coming over? Well... I used to play badminton back in France, and I thought, hey, badminton and tennis are kind of similar, right? I decided that I'd come take a look. I'm sure they're similar, and about the same way that American football is similar to rugby. Well, the school doesn't have a badminton club, so it's fine. I'll show you around a bit, but, well... I try getting I try getting up one more time, and just like the last time, my legs immediately buckle under my weight, forcing me down on the seat again. As you can see, I can barely stand. Wow, you seem to be really fit, too. Is practice that tough in this club? Nah, just this This is specific just to me. Ibuchi san is the number two player in Japan, so he gets a different training menu for him. To be fair, our club only has one coach, so he can't possibly create and supervise individual training menus for each and every player. He gives a little extra attention to the ones who draw sponsors for our club, and the others get to choose up between a few pre made training menus. Hmm, that sounds interesting. I wonder if I could play tennis. If you want, you could give it a try. I can lend you a racket and everything. Really, that'd be great. Although, my rackets are custom-made for me, taking into consideration my body build and style of play, so maybe it wouldn't be such a great idea. June, can you fetch Kaken for me? You're gonna ask to borrow one of his spare rackets? At first I thought of asking Saya, since Vikun's build, build is more in line with hers, but then I remembered that she also has rackets being custom-made for her. Wouldn't a Rishi Harrison just hire a company to make custom rackets for him, too? He could if he wanted to, but he said he doesn't want to use his financial status as an advantage. That's surprisingly humble of him. He's an odd guy like that. Anyway, if you will. Sure, I'll be right back. Uh, by the way, Vikun. Wait, is it going to be Vikun or Shevkun? Either one is fine. Anyway, what made you leave France for Japan? Think you're moving here long term? He fidgets in place at my sudden inquiry, looking unsure. Hey, I've always been interested in your culture, so I decided to spend some time abroad here. You know, get some fresh air, maybe learn a new thing or two. That's an interesting sentiment. I myself don't really know much about the French. Is it true that you guys eat snails? Gah! I can see him physically cringing inwardly at my question. Is it true that you guys enjoy fornicating with tentacled monsters? Uh... Exactly. Can we please drop the cultural stereotypes? Sorry, sorry, you don't have to get so upset about it. Ah! Is a feeling now realized that Vikan looks at me with shock. Oh, s sorry. It wasn't my intention to be rude. He desperately bows, uttering a dozen apologies. It's fine, I asked a rude question. No, I should have snapped at you. Jeez, lighten up a little. What's going on? Why is Chef Kun bowing? What? Well, it's nothing. He immediately jumps up, standing up as straight as he can, fidgeting on the spot. Anyway, here you go. Irushi Harris had just asked that you be careful with it. Oh, uh, thanks. Victor takes hold of the racket, very carefully swinging it around to get a feel for it. It's heavy. It feels a bit weird. Well, you're used to playing with a badminton racket, so I'm not really supervised. Surprised, so supervised. If you want to give it a try, ask Coach. The application period has already passed, but since being part of a club is, is mandatory, I'm sure they'll be. I'm sure they'll open an exception for you. Um, where's the coach? He's the tall crocodile that's walking around the court somewhere. 
Not sure exactly where. Uh, go look around for a bit. Okay, um, see ya. Yeah, see ya. I tell ya, don't worry so much, you'll be fine. Victor nods and runs off looking for Coach Mikado. Ah, I forgot to tell him Coach's name. What really matter? No one calls him by name anyway from what I've seen. Hmm, I guess you're right. By the way, how are you feeling? Are you really so tired that you can't stand? Yeah, I'm sore everywhere. It's frustrating. I'm pretty sure I'm done for the day. I'm sorry to hear. Oh, I can give you a massage if you want. A massage? Do you even know how to do one properly? Sure. Dad always came home from work exhausted. Mom used to work extra shifts back then. So I learned to give him massages to try and help him out a little. Aw, oh, that's very sweet of you. You're probably a model son. Yeah, <laughs> you praise me too much. If you want, we can go to the locker room and I can give you a massage there. I'd love to, but... I try standing up once more for effect. The same... The same thing as the last two times happened, except this time I fall forward. Wow! Jin reacts fast, grabbing me before I can hit the floor. Immediately, I can feel his knees quaking under my weight. What? You witchy son, you're heavy! S sorry, let me adjust myself. I try sitting back down, but Jun pulls me towards him once more. What? It's fine. Just try to take some of your just try to just try to take some of your weight. I'll help you walk to the lockers. Oh, all right. Jun plops me down on one of the locker room benches, and I immediately rest my back on one of the lockers. Thanks for that. Thanks for that, and sorry for making you do this. No worries. I'm glad to help. Now about that massage. He stops take. He stops talking abruptly, looking away. What? Well, usually when you give someone a massage, you want to touch the skin instead of the clothes. My dad used to strip down to his boxers when I gave him massages. Oh. What? Well, never mind, forget I said that. This is fine. No, no, you're right. Um, I don't really feel comfortable taking off my shorts, though. Is just my shirt, is just my shirt fine? Y yes. I quickly removed my shirt, exposing my sweaty torso to June. The fur completely matted and pressed down by the sweat. He looks away for a second before glancing tentatively at me again, his face a little red. Okay, would you rather do your front or your back first? What? What? Uh, I mean, for the massage. Would you rather I massage your front or your back first? Uh, oh, f front? Uh, okay. June gets really close to me, so much so that I can feel the heat radiating from him. Despite his earlier confidence, he doesn't look me in the eye. He slowly reaches out with his hand and ins instinctively holds my breath as it comes closer to my arm. When he finally touches my bicep, I involuntarily twitch, making him gasp in surprise. S Sorry! Uh, oh, uh, okay. He brings his other hand to touch me and sl starts slowly massaging my arm. His ministration is soothing and I can almost feel myself melt into his touch. Damn it, he wasn't lying. He is pretty good at this. I can already feel the muscles in my arm relaxing. Is this okay? I'm not going too hard, am I? No, it's fine. Damn it. Even though my body's relaxing, my mind just can't relax. This is too awkward. He's still not even looking at me and his face is bright red. June makes sure to massage all my arm. From the base of my shoulder all the way down to my wrist, he eases the tension and gets rid of some of the dull pain that I was feeling overall, all over my body. By the time he's done with my left arm, it feels completely different from the right, and he immediately sets to work with that. You weren't kidding, you're pretty good at this. Thanks. After quite a few minutes that feel like an eternity, a pleasurable eternity, but an eternity nonetheless, June finishes massaging both of my arms and comes to a pause, staring at my chest. Um, if you're uncomfortable with it, you don't have to. No, I'm used to it. It's just, uh, weird when it's not my dad. But touching a friend like this is, um... Still, he eventually reaches out and places his hands on my pecs, setting to work on them almost immediately. He is choking so expertly that my entire body relaxes. Damn. It takes every fiber of my willpower to keep myself from moaning. Mm hmm. Naughty boys. It's just that good. I look at the clock on the wall and realize it's already been 20 minutes since we started. Damn, there's less than an hour of practice left. Even if I have a perfectly valid explanation for this, I still don't want to end up being caught in a situation. Alright, I'm done with your chest. Now for your, um, lower body. My attention shifts back to my own senses when he talks to me, and that's when I notice something wrong. Just as June starts to look down. Well, it's okay. I'm fine. Totally fine. I jump up faster than I ever judged possible, immediately turning away from him. It's embarrassing to say that I reacted too much to his touch. There's no way I can let him see me like this. But, but I'm not done yet. I still have to do your legs and your back. There's no need for it. I already feel invigorated. See? 100%. I flex some muscles for display, desperately trying to convince him to drop it. But, but we haven't gone all the way yet. I want to help you. Oh yes, you can certainly help me if you... What the hell am I thinking? Stop it, brain. Bat, bat, bat. Get your mind out of the gutter. I shouldn't even be having these sorts of thoughts. June is a guy and my friend. You already have. I, I told you. I am as good as new. 
I can even stand now, see? It's at moments like these that I'm happy for the adrenaline rush. No way I could stand being- no way I could stand being without it. Hmm, alright, I guess you're right. There's no reason to keep going if it's already done its job. Yes, exactly! Uh, no reason! <laughs> well, if you're really okay, I'm gonna go watch Chef come trying out practice. I'm totally fine. I'll be there in a second. Junot's firmly smiling brightly. I can see his fangs poking from his smile, and that's obviously adorable. I wonder how he'd look if... No! Bat! 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 As soon as he leaves, I immediately drop all my weight back on the bench, making it creak. You're such a piece of work, you know. Of all times for you to act up. I guess it's been a while since I've gotten someone's attention down there. Great, and now I'm talking to myself again. Ling ling. Ling ling. <laughs> One second, y'all. Water. Alright, April 18th, Tuesday. Such a beautiful day. Such, what's a, what a beautiful day. The sun is bright, the sky is blue, the weather is mild, the breeze outside ruffles the, ruffles the leaves of the trees, covering the parks and streets in green and pink, carrying the scent of greenery in the air. It is, without a doubt, a wonderful day. Nothing could possibly ruin it. No one could possibly be sad or upset or preoccupied on a day like this. Well, except for... <laughs> June. June, seriously, sit down. I try repeating it for the umpteenth time, hoping that this time he'll actually register what I'm saying, or that he won't disregard me at least. I, I can't sit down. I can't keep myself set down. I, I just can't. His voice is two keys higher than usual, and he's stuttering so much that I can barely make out what he's saying. His entire body is shivering. Is this adrenaline coursing through him, or is he just quaking in fear? Honestly, I have no idea. Come on, why are you so serious? Didn't you say you've performed live before? Didn't you used to take part in competitions? Yeah, but it's been so long since the last time. Uh, how long, exactly? About seven years? Are you asking me or telling me? I'm not sure. Great, he's not making sense. Come on, June, you have experience with this. You should have learned to believe in yourself by now. Having experience doesn't mean I can't screw up. A single mistake could stop me from getting to the next stage. Look, just, just sit down for a minute and try to compose yourself, okay? Put my hands on both of his shoulders and force him down on one of the benches they have in the lobby. Honestly, though, this place is massive. It's so full of people that even I feel a bit on edge. I can definitely understand why June would be bothered. Just breathe, okay? Nice, long, deep breaths. I try showing him some breathing exercises, but he fails pathetically at all of them. His breathing is so rapid and ragged that I'm afraid he just might give himself a heart attack. Actually, could he be having a panic attack? Wait, could it be that what he had last time was a panic attack? I've never had one, but aren't the symptoms something like this? Ah, oh, great. It's at times like these that I wish I knew something about medicine. I kneel down to stay eye level with him, putting one hand on his shoulder and the other on his chest. I immediately start to feel awkward as memories of what happened yesterday flash in my mind. Still, I try to ignore them as best as I can. Right now, I need to help June. Alright, first things first. What was it that I learned about panic attacks? I remember Shuichi telling me, telling me about times... June, look at me, okay? Look me in the eyes. Can you do that for me? June sets his eyes on my face. His eyes are bloodshot and scared, but he does as I say, slowly nodding for me. Good. Now, focus on my hand on your chest. Can you feel my hand on your chest? Can you feel it moving when you breathe? June looks down at my hand, making me move it to his chin and raise his head, so he only looks at my face. No, you don't need to look at it. Just feel my hand on your chest. Uh, okay. Now, I want you to breathe for me, okay? Just focus on moving my hand around when you do it. Four seconds in, two seconds out. Four seconds in, two seconds out. Can you do that for me? I'll try. June starts to take deep breaths. He struggles a bit at first, but his breathing starts to become more and more regular. It takes a couple of minutes, but I can feel his body relaxing with my hands. I make sure to smile at him the whole time, reminding him that I'm here to help. I feel a bit awkward about doing this in such a public place, but my number and one priority should be June. There we go. You're doing a lot better already. Do you feel any better? A, a little. I don't feel like I'm going to suffocate anymore. That's good. See, there's nothing for you to be afraid of. This is just a day like any other. You're fine. He swallows hard and nods. It makes me feel a bit better to be able to keep to help him in some way. I guess I don't have to stand around and feel helpless. Now, how about we talk about something more pleasant, huh? Is there anything you'd like to talk about? Not really. Come on, there must be something. Just say the first thing that comes to mind. Well, there's this book series I really like. Uh, the new book came out just last week, but I don't have the money to buy it yet. Oh, that's cool. What's this series about? I was just looking to distract him with some pleasant conversation, but this might actually be interesting. It's called the Murderous Queen Trilogy. It's a story set in a fantasy world about a former queen who escapes death after her husband is overthrown and killed in a rebellion and then goes around looking for vengeance. 
That doesn't sound at all like something you'd expect. I'd expect you to read. Why? You think I can't enjoy a mature, complex story? What? No, no. Yes. Well, it's just that you tend to go for more, um, happier stories? I've heard you talking about, like, some games before, and they were all very teen-friendly. This one sounds like something that I wouldn't recommend for a 17-year-old. Well, the well, rating is 17+, plus, and I'm 19. I don't see the issue here. Uh, true enough. If a bit out of character, at least in my opinion. And the book that was just released was, what, the second one? June shakes his head in negative. It's the last one. I read the first two, and they were really good. I'll admit, I was just 14 when the first one came out, so I wasn't actually supposed to read it. My dad was just feeling very tired when he took me when he took me out to buy a birthday present and I didn't look at what the book I didn't look at the book I picked. Sounds like a lousy parenting at its finest. <laughs> Mom was really mad when she found the book. Poor dad got the brunt of it. As he should, letting a 14-year-old kid read something like that, but then again, I've played games that were like like that when I was a kid, so I guess I'm one to talk. No, well, sounds like you like like you like it a lot. What was the name of that? What was the name of his third book? Just for curiosity's sake. I might just end up buying it for him later. Um, what was it called again? Ah, uh, The Red Keep. Huh, that's an interesting name. I might end up picking up a copy of these for myself. Well, what else? Tell me more about it. Um, I'd rather not. You might want to read them in the future, and I don't want to spoil you. Shh, spoilers are my bed, bread and butter. I don't care about spoilers. Come on, tell me more. Anything that keeps you talking and stops you from freaking out. Well, okay, but first, can you take your hand off from my chest? There's some people looking, and it's a bit embarrassing. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye!